Hey, what's up? Chanel, welcome to a brand new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlogs Movie Massacre. I'm gonna come up with a better name. It's just, I saw a movie for the first time in a movie theater since I saw Star Wars The Force Awakens. Now, thank you to John Randall for donating immolation here and after Corpse Gristle reissue for the channel, my personal favorite immolation record. Yes, I like this more than Dawn of Possession, but still looking for Dawn of Possession on cassette. But Jesus didn't die for me. Jesus died. Fuck yeah. Just evil killer New York death metal. Great year for Immolation fans, and a great year for death metal reissues. I don't really know how gnarly the black metal reissue scene was, but I feel like the essential black metal releases are always kind of in stock in some way, shape, or form. And that's important. But for the longest time, I know this was very hard to find. And like, I have a Russian bootleg right here, and I don't care, I'm sorry, but at the time, this was so fucking hard to get, a buddy of mine sent it to me as like a birthday present. I mean, it's a total bootleg, but like, it sounds phenomenal. The gatefold, it's on this colored LP, and like, the sound quality is actually really good. But still, like, to me, this is something that, you know, nobody should be paying $75 for. Like, it's kind of an essential record along with the Sombreland. Like, I'm pretty sure they did a double LP version, but I don't know if they used the Necrolord artwork because I didn't bother with it. It was expensive and, you know, whatever, but it's awesome that just, you know, even just to have this. But trust me, I would love to have the official reissue just for, just to see the difference in sound quality, because this has really good sound quality. But it says it's under license by a company, but it's not under the obvious. It's whatever. I'm getting off subject. So I saw Ghostbusters Afterlife yesterday with my nephew. There's gonna be spoilers. So you have five seconds right now to watch something else if you have not seen the movie yet or if you don't plan on seeing the movie, whatever, just hang out. But starting right now, once I get to zero, I'm gonna start talking and there's gonna be movie spoilers, okay? So, ready? Five. All right. This is the movie I feared it was going to be. And it's not Ghostbusters 2016 bad. And that movie was just bad. Like, it was just a piece of shit. It sucked. It wasn't funny. Now, I'm aware that the original Ghostbusters is lightning in a bottle. You cannot capture the magic of this film ever again, no matter how much you try. The third film is technically the video game, but it kind of seemed like the second movie now is no longer canon. There was no mention of Vigo the Carpathian, no mention of the Statue of Liberty. They did mention New York in the 80s and Ghostbusters 2 was 1989. So technically that might have fell under the 80s, but it seemed mostly around the Gozer incident at Dana Barrett's apartment building. So, I feared that Ghostbusters Afterlife was going to be a soft reboot. I feared that we were going to get five minutes with the main original Ghostbusters crew. And I feared 
them actually doing something that Jay from Red Letter Media joked about like two years ago, I think. Or no, when the trailer came out, he joked about like, you know, he was kind of making predictions and he said, you know, they're going to do a CGI Harold Ramis. Rest in power to fucking Harold. Just genius person. Great comedian. But, um, yeah. He was on the money. We got a CGI Egon. It happened. I lived it. And I was the only one in that movie theater that legitimately was not falling for the nostalgia. Like, dude, it felt like at times, like, especially, like, when fucking Paul Rudd's fake Lewis character ends up at Walmart, I felt like I was watching a fucking Walmart commercial. Like, it's just bogus. Like, I thought it was fucking corny. Don't get me wrong, there were some cool parts, like, the way the fucking Zul Pit looked when it was, like, opening and shit before, you know, the proton packs would hit it and cross the streams, which somehow Gary, a.k.a. Paul Rudd, knew how to move. Like, what? Just don't, There were weird stuff that was just like, what? You're really, like, making such a massive gap in logic? And then... Forcing these kind of unfunny jokes onto the main character to be part of her trait, I get it, you know, it was, it was trying to capture a little bit of the first film's organic comedy, but it just felt like trying too hard. Whereas there were a couple scenes where that kid from Stranger Things I felt like he actually understood his role in the movie, like, there's like one part where he makes a comment, like, hey, remember that summer when we all died under that table? Like, that was a joke we used to say when I, I was in high school. It was just, I don't know, it's kind of, like, dated, but at the same time, it's something a kid in high school definitely would say. So it just kind of felt real. And I, I liked that. Like, some of the writing was not bad. But the fan service... I'm not cool with that shit. Like, it, I felt the same way with Star Wars. And I'm not trying to be that guy. Like, you know, Ghostbusters Afterlife did not ruin my childhood. But was it a good movie? Yeah, like... I'll put it this way, I couldn't remember the main girl's name for a half hour afterwards. Her name's Phoebe. But, like, I couldn't remember it. But, like, I could Dana Barrett, you know. I mean, if you do go and see the movie, make sure you stay after the credits. There's a whole setup for the second one. Because, of course, you have after credits sequences, and, of course, we have to have another movie, or at least another setup. It all depends how much money this movie makes, I guess. But, um, I'm sure it's gonna make a lot of money because... I'm telling you, that CGI Egon is really meant to pull on your heartstrings. And it does. I'm not gonna lie, it really does the job. Even though I knew, yeah, I knew it was coming when the third act happened and it was like beat for beat. 1984 Ghostbusters, I was like, I, like... Because I went with my nephew, like, my mom just dropped us off. I, like, texted my mom. I was like, yeah, like, movies are going to be over in, like, 15 minutes. Plus after credits, like. So, yeah. I was on the, like, I was legit on the money. It was kind of ridiculous. And then at certain points, I, like, was leaning over to my nephew and, like, saying the dialogue before the dialogue would happen. Because I was like, yo, they better not rehash that are you a god joke. Because there's no way this character would forget the Ghostbusters. But, like, the whole character of Vincent Cortho was not mentioned. 
Like they kept calling the one dog Gozer, but that's not the that's not right. That's Vincent Corpo. There's the key master and the gatekeeper. There's Zool and Vincent Corpo. And when they come together, that creates, that opens the realm of Gozer, the Gozerian. So there were certain little, little fuck ups, but I wouldn't even call them fuck ups. Like for a movie that's obsessed with fan service, there's certain things you shouldn't screw up. And that's one of them. Like not bringing up Vincent Corpo. Not bringing up Vigo the Carpathian in any way, shape, or form. The after credit scene with Dana Barrett and Peter Venkman. Not mentioning Oscar. Like, there was so much you could have done just to let people know, like, oh, the second movie happened. Because now, I don't know if Ghostbusters 2 counts. Yeah, I'm in that fucking type of dork when it comes to this shit. I hope it does, you know, like, but this really, you know, will I watch it again? I'll probably have to, but will it be like, would I go out of my way to see it again? Fuck no. Like, absolutely not. But some of the practical effects were good, like, so that was a plus. I liked the practical effects, but everything else, it was kind of boof. Boof busters. But then that would be a good thing, you know? It would be busting boof. So, can't call it that. Ghost boost it? Ghost boofers? I don't know. I'm not that clever, but it was what it was. If you're a fan of nostalgia and fan service, then you'll fucking enjoy this. If you like looking for little Easter eggs and shit, yeah, you'll, you'll really like this movie. But if you actually want an original story, which could have been possible, you're not gonna get it. You're pretty much getting a remake of the original without that chemistry of the original Ghostbusters, who only show up for about seven minutes. Not counting the post credit sequence, but probably about seven minutes. Maybe nine if you count the Dan Aykroyd phone call scene. But, you know, it's a new Ghostbusters movie, and it could have been a lot worse. It could have been, you know, the 2016 Ghostbusters. But, like, this fucking fanboy was leaving the theater. He's like, that's what the 2016 Ghostbusters should have been! And part of me wanted to just like, see this is what sucks about knowing like I'm still hurt, but like, I might not look hurt, I'm still hurt. Like, I just wanted to grab him by the back of his hoodie and just pull him to the fucking ground and be like, dude, shut the fuck up, like you don't know what you're talking about. And first off, like, people that haven't seen the movie, you're fuck, like, don't say anything. Like, you gotta let people know you're gonna talk about a movie ahead of time these days, because the littlest thing can spoil it. But, yeah, I don't know. It didn't fill in any holes or anything like that. It was kind of unnecessary. But I get, you know, wanting to pass the torch and whatnot. Sony wanting to make some money off that ghost corpse side company they have again i get it you know all the sony product placement it's there he's got to look like even on those goggles those goggles there's straight up sony logo right in the middle look it's there the walmart scene though is the most blatant like what the fuck <laughs> like, it feels like you're just watching a commercial like it's kind of weird but you know, I know a lot of you enjoy those Avenger movies and stuff, like, those are exactly what the Red Letter Media guys say they are, though, to me. They're amusement parks, but, but movies. They're loud, they're bright, and, you know, they're enjoyable. But they try to be something they're not sometimes, and that's, I don't know. 
I know some of those films do have a good deal of intelligence, but sometimes they don't. And it's just like explosions and remember Dr. Octopus? Like shit like that. Like there was a trailer for the new Ghostbusters and like it was just overkill. It was like every Spider-Man villain. And it was just like, what the fuck? Like, what? There's no need for this. And I don't know. I just don't give a fuck. Especially when it comes to Avengers and whatnot. I've never even seen that whole entire movie because it's not the type of movie I like. I'm a fan of fucking like movies like The Lighthouse, not like Taxi Driver. But then I also love, you know, street trash and anthropophagus. Like, I, I like, like that. The Beyond. The, the original Dawn of the Dead. Zombie. Like, I like those types of movies. The original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The Gate. Like, I love that shit. Early Godzilla, you know, there's certain movies that you can't fuck with. And you can't fuck with the 1984 Ghostbusters, no matter what reissue. All right, not reissue. No matter how many remakes you fucking do. Look at how nice this immolation reissue is of here and after. Corpse Gristle allowed Metal Blade, I meant Metal Blade allowed Corpse Gristle. Put this bad boy on tape. And it sounds fucking great. But when it comes to Ghostbusters Afterlife, give that movie a 6 out of 10. Because if you have kids, your kids are going to love it. And if they've never seen the original Ghostbusters, show them it. And then show them this new movie. Or do it vice versa. It's up to you. But... Not knowing now if the second movie is canon, as nerdy as that is, to me that's important. So, you know, if you know, then leave in the comments. But again, if you watch this movie, I re I'm, if you watch this video, I really hope you watch the movie in advance. So, that's just my opinion. That's all I'm saying. But thanks to John Randall, we've been blasting Immolation's classic here and after 1996. Reissued by Corpse Gristle, licensed by Metal Blade. Officially. Badass. But as always, thanks for watching. You fucking rule. Hails.